So I apologize in advance for my getup and the noise in the background, but um, I'm on vacation and I wasn't really gonna post a story time, but then my best friend Alea <laughs> reminded me of this thing that actually happened while I was here because I'm in my hometown in Italy. So this story time happened when, I can't remember if I was 17 or 18, I'm really inclined to think that I was 17, but I don't want to say that because, you know, there are implications, you'll find out later. Um, but anyways, <laughs> so <clears throat> every year since I was a baby, I've been coming here, so now it's 23 years that I've been coming here, so like I said in a previous video, you pretty much know everyone just even by sight, you know, even if you don't talk. So we always used to go to this grocery store after lunch because first of all, our air, ugh, our rooms weren't air conditioned and the grocery store had an air conditioned section downstairs. And then also I'd go to get like fresh fruit or like a snack for after. So we'd go there every day and my best friend Alea and I um, kind of already knew what the cashiers, like who they were by sight again, because like it was always the same people. It's like a very small town. So it has that vibe of like everyone knows everyone. And there was this guy who we didn't remember seeing who was working there, and um, we had noticed him because he looked younger than everyone else. Everyone there looked like they were like in their 40s or 50s, but he looked like, we guessed he was like 25. Something 25, around 25. And so, <clears throat> sorry, I have notes here. Um, <laughs> And so we'd see him every so often, and he'd smile at us, and he was nice and funny, whatever. So we were like, oh, it's cool that there's someone our age. Because here, the thing is, like, people are either, like, 90 or babies. It seems like there's no one in between. Now there are plenty of tweens, actually, but back then, no. So I remember the first time we started, like, kind of talking to him in more than, like, do you want a receipt kind of way, was this one time, there was a French couple in front of us at the checkout. And uh, Alain and I were standing behind them, and to say bag in French, it's sec to ask if they wanted a bag. And Alain and I started laughing. This was dumb, but it was actually still kind of funny. But we started laughing because we we're like, how weird would it be if you called it a sack? It's like, do you want a sack to put your stuff in? Whatever. Maybe it's not funny. Whatever. And he heard us. So we didn't know that he heard us, but then when it was our turn to pay, and instead of asking us if we wanted a bag in Italian as usual, he'd be like, sack? And so we just like lost our shit because he'd heard us being silly. And um, so after then, we af after that kind of little happening, we had a more um, playful, I guess, less professional relationship in the sense that we'd be like, hey, what's up, whatever. And um, so that led to the central thing. So the central thing that happened is that one day I went to the supermarket by myself and Alea stayed in the hotel and I just went to get the usual stuff. Everything was as normal. And I usually don't like getting the receipt. So when he said, do you want the receipt? I was like, no, it's cool. And then he was like, no, no, take it. And I was like, okay, weird. And so as soon as I exit the store, I look at the receipt and on the back, it's like his number and then it says, call me. And so I was like, okay. Cool. And so I thought he was around my age, so I was like, okay, cool, like there's no one here that's our age, we might as well start talking to someone who is. And I never had any um, romantic interest, like for me it was all platonic and it was playful, it was nothing, you know, like there was no understanding that this was going to be anything other than platonic. So I texted him, being like, hey, it's Julia, whatever, and I soon found out that he did not like texting. He really avoided it at all costs. So every so like every so often, I think after the first day of texting, he'd say, Can I call? And then he stopped even asking if he could call and he would just call me whenever. And this happened I think on the span of like two or three weeks, because I was here for like two months at the time. And uh, he would call and keep me on the phone for like half an hour talking about the stupidest stuff and like he was nice and everything, but it's just like, I felt like he never wanted to talk about anything like important or anything that was personal, and I'm not even talking about telling me your life story, it's just like telling me if he has brothers or sisters, telling me what music he likes, telling me your views about beaches with sand versus pebbles, I don't give a shit, just tell me something about your opinion, but he never did that, and I always thought that was like a big turn off, like even in a platonic way, because it's like, how are we going to become friends if I don't know anything about you really? So, this guy, his name was Roberto, I don't really care to censor it, like I don't really have any followers, so I doubt he's ever gonna find this, but, um, yeah. So anyways, um, after all this calling, 
I was like, I don't even know this guy's age, you know, like, we've only been talking about, like, how was work, how was your day, it was very, you know, a very weird kind of beginning of a friendship. So one time he called me, and he called me late at night. <sighs> Poor Alea had to live through this also, because, like, he'd call me and I'd have to get up and, like, go into another room to answer his call. And he'd just, like, start talking, and sometimes he'd keep me on the phone, even, like, at that time. I'll and this one time I decided like I'm gonna ask how old he is because like we were so sure he was 25 it didn't really matter <laughs> but then I asked him while we were on the phone which is funny because like if I'd done this by text I certainly wouldn't have heard his reaction but I was like hey so how old are you by the way like I'm just wondering and he's like I'm 39 and I was like what not look 39 and so I was taken aback a little bit because like I said I was either illegal or on board or just just turned 18 so I was just kind of like okay this is really uncomfortable now you know because I feel like at first I thought I was talking to someone who could understand my point of view and was in a similar point in their lives as me but there was just kind of like this person you know could have a kid that's 10 by now you know and that'd be normal I don't know it was just a very a very weird sensation and I started feeling really uncomfortable and he hadn't asked me how old I was either which I thought was weird anyways after that he asked me how old are you and I was like I'm 17 or 18 whatever age I was and he was like oh and you could hear that he was weirded out so I guess he thought I was older or whatever and then he just kept talking about normal things like he went back to his business and I was really weird now and I remember hanging up the phone I remember it being the first thing I told Alea the next day being like he is 39 what the fuck and Alea was shocked too, and we were both like, this is really weird all of a sudden, you know? Because like, I don't want to judge anyone, but a 40 year old getting a receipt to someone asking them out, you just think that by that age someone would be, you know, established enough, confident enough in themselves just to ask you out properly, like you've had enough time to practice. So I felt kind of uncomfortable and I dodged a couple of his calls, so I just didn't really know what I thought of it just yet. And then, when I started dodging his calls, he started calling and calling and calling and calling and I'd get like 20 missed calls. Or I remember this one time we are at the beach and he knew around what time I'd go to the beach so he knew I was there. And he, he would call me like many times and then text me saying, what's wrong, are you mad, whatever. And I was like, I'm in the water, like I'm swimming dude, chill. And he became extremely, extremely clingy. And so after that I kind of went MIA. I felt uncomfortable asking him to stop talking to me because I guess since he was so much older I just felt like I was in a weird position it almost felt like I was telling off like a parent or an adult for something so I just thought it was easier to dodge and stop answering which on you know in hindsight probably was just easier to tell him to stop the awkward thing though is that he worked at the grocery store and he was pretty much there anytime I went so it was just very uncomfortable because I'd see him and I'd specifically go out of my way to go to another cashier and I was always 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 scared to have to bump into him because I was like this is gonna be weird, it's gonna be awkward, he's gonna be pissed especially with someone who's so clingy that as soon as you don't answer they ask you what are you doing whatever you just know that you're in for a shit show if they start asking you about what are you doing, why aren't you answering if you haven't answered for a couple days so um, this one time he called me when I was at the beach and I was I decided to answer just because like it made me more anxious to see someone calling and not answering and I think he actually hit his phone number yeah he hit his phone number um, it said like anonymous or whatever and so I picked up and it was him and I was like fuck and he asked me how I w he pretty much ignored the fact that I hadn't been talking to him or anything and he asked me how my day was what how how I was doing, I don't know, just like very boring basic questions. And I was answering pretty much in one word. I was very taciturn and I didn't want to talk. I felt very uncomfortable and I felt like my stomach clenched. And I remember him being like, are you mad? And I'm like, no, like I just think we should stop talking. And he got like really angry and was like, why, what did you do, blah, blah, blah. And so I just hung up on him. <laughs> and later he called me again. And this time I didn't answer, but I remember I got a voicemail saying that like he thought we were more than this he thought that he mattered to me and it's just like we literally had no personal conversation there was no understanding that you know anything was ever going to happen between us romantically or that even our friendship was so evolved to the point where you'd say oh i thought i mattered to you it's just like we met a couple weeks ago this you haven't told me anything so not even your age to begin with so anyways, he would call me every so often, and every so often I'd answer the call just because I guess I was a little scared of what might happen if I bumped into him 
and we were on shitty terms, so I just tried to keep things mellow. <clears throat> and I also felt like I couldn't really tell anyone apart from Alea about it, you know, like if I was worried or weirded out, for the simple reason that I low-key... It's not that I brought it on myself, but I accepted to talk to him, and then he took it to a new level. And I know that accepting to talk to someone doesn't give them license to act that way, but that's why I felt at the time. I felt, I guess, guilty on his part, because... I didn't lead him on, but it felt that way back then. It was very stressful and tiring to have to deal with someone who was there and being creepy and always trying to talk to you and being clingy, you know, especially when the person is so much older, you expect them to be mature, but he just wasn't, and I think that also scared me because I just didn't know at what lengths he would go to be ridiculous and clingy. But anyways, the point where our relationship really ended <laughs> was over a bag of M&M's. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna buy a bag of M&M's. And so I, I go up to pay or whatever, and since they were a new item, Roberto, who was checking me out, obviously, because there was no one else, which was very uncomfortable, was like, oh yeah, like, we haven't yet put in, like, the barcode for this or something. Like, for some reason, he couldn't scan it. Like, it wasn't listed yet, so I couldn't have them. And that really pissed me off because I was like, what the fuck, like, this is so annoying and I got really rationally mad. And then when I did that, he said to me, Hey, chill, they're just M&Ms, it's not like they can replace love. And just looked at me really creepily and with this just like smug smile. And so I just like dumped them and ms and like threw them at him. But after that, I think he never talked to me again. I think he thought I was like too passionate about the whole M&M thing. More passionate than I was about our friendship for sure, so. That's how it ended.